Hello, so this is me just before I go live on YouTube for the very first time. I thought I ought to get the camera out and um, show you the setup before it all goes however it goes. I'm um, a bit nervous about this because I've never gone live on YouTube before. I've got, uh, this is my setup, hello. This is me in StreamYard. I'm using StreamYard to do this. So I've gone into the studio I've set up my caption. I've got my guest, he's got a link, so I'm waiting for him to join the call. And I've I'm also I've managed to get an old monitor out of the loft. <laughs> and it's great because it means that all of the screens that I want to share live on my live stream are just somewhere else on another screen. So I'm not panicking and hitting I don't know what buttons. These are the choices here for what I can switch live. There's, that's me. And with my guests, I could be side by side, or it could be box in box. And oh, we've got a guest appearing now, and you can share screen. Anyway, let's see how it goes. <laughs> we are joined. Yeah, go on. A bit, a bit of music would be great. Thanks, Mark. We are joined on the Great British YouTubers podcast with Mark A. Wright. So I'm even pointing the right way with my mirrored camera, and I'll show you how that works in a minute. Mark, how are you? I'm very well, Mr. Mossy. How are you doing? <laughs> this is an experiment to talk about going live on YouTube while going live on YouTube. And it's part of a bigger live video that's going out right now, but you're probably watching the recording. And Mark, we've been talking a lot about the options open to you as a, as a musician for, for streaming live. And I'm doing it on StreamYard, which is why I've got a logo scorched into the the corner of the screen is Streamyard something that you've looked into just before i show show you around how it's working for me i have and the reason why i haven't pursued it is because it tends to distort audio if you're playing a uh, guitar so i don't know whether this is going to do it to you now so that'd be interesting but <laughs> I, when I did a StreamYard link with someone before, and it was basically I was there as a guest for 20 minutes on like a two-hour stream, I did some rock and roll, and it sounded awful. So I think for speech, it's great. For music, I think there's something about how it processes the audio. But if you are interested in looking into StreamYard, let's go live on my second camera. Hello, this is the happy hut. This is where the, the magic happens. And I've got the live link to Mark A. Wright down in the corner there. I don't know if you can see this, Mark. But okay. this is the dashboard. This is the StreamYard dashboard. I found it really easy to set up. You just get a StreamYard login at StreamYard.com. Once you've logged in, you can basically title your live broadcast. So I've put in a description and a title, and hopefully that's the one that you can see when if you're watching live right now. Well, it's a bit of a sort of Bohemian Rhapsody kind of look there, isn't it? This is the dashboard in front of you. Everything is laid out so clearly. Yeah. So I've got my options here for the layout. I can split the screen. So I'm doing it on the screen there. So that's a split screen. Or we can go box in box. And I could go big and small. And we can screen share. We can screen share with both of us. I'm just sort of working along the line here. So let's isolate that again. Or I could punch up the, the screen share completely. You can choose which Chrome tab or which window or which monitor even, which display to switch live. The other really nice thing with it is that on the right-hand side, you have banners. So if I turn that off, it names us. So if I split the screen, you can see us. Sorry, Phil, I'm ignoring you. I'm here. No. <laughs> and you can switch up any banner you like. So I can put up this banner. You can get as many as you like. You can even change the color of them. With the pro version, the banner is taken off. This StreamYard logo is scorched in live. You can take that off if you pay for the paid version. I'm thinking of doing it. It feels so much more more natural to do this as a, as a live than a recording. So Mark, we've had two comments come in. Shall we see them? Yes. Basically, you, all you do is click on the comments button and it lays them out. A snowball newbie. Let's switch this out straight to air. So I split the screen by clicking the split screen button. It, it would help if I switch to decaf. I think my camera operating would definitely improve. So we have a selection of comments. Let's switch noble newbie up live. Hi Neil, I'm taking a quick break from work and that's your live stream. Hope all is going well. 
I think it's going okay, uh, No More Newbie. And I've been looking into StreamYard, so really interesting to see behind the scenes of it being used. Thank you. Well, that's really kind of you. I hope this uh, encourages you to dip your toe in, because I was terrified of uh, doing it. And Mark very kindly offered to be on a live stream. So to talk about live streaming on YouTube as a live YouTube stream is a very exciting moment for me, I think. I think it's the perfect way of doing it, actually. Just while we're here, I've screwed the, the camera to the wall on a monitor holder that. this was a tip yeah. from the DSLR shooter he showed how to do this but put this onto like a pole that you could right. move around I screwed it to a wall and it's just it's just saved everything because the hardest part of making a YouTube video was to just get the camera out and mount it on a on a tripod right because if you're performing live I guess you've got a date and a location um, you've just got to do it but if you're making videos ad hoc just getting the equipment out is hard enough right. so that's just permanently set to go and so you know yeah. all you need to do is pull out that yeah. camera stand and then you know it's yeah. already set for the angle that you want it to be that's great totally it's really easy to set up and you're just good to go yeah. and I, I got a, a an old monitor out of the loft because uh, you can get monitors in in charity shops in the uk for like 20 quid at the moment so i've got yeah. your facebook page here so we can cover here's, that line so you've got your equipment that's set up to go so you fire it up anytime do you find that has led to you being more creative because you're able to be more spontaneous making your youtube clips because you haven't got to think about setting up totally 100 percent. it's a good question what i've been able to do is to just make tiny little improvements each time as i say that i can see that i've left a box up <laughs> in the background but generally it just means i can make little incremental improvements so with the lighting, I've not shown this actually. I got this from Lidl from a supermarket. It's just a lighting panel. Right. If you were to get this as like pro photographic gear, it would probably cost over a hundred dollars. This cost me about thirty dollars. Is that something that you plug in or is it battery? Yeah, it's a plug in light and you know, it even comes with remote control, so you can change the color, you can change the intensity. Yeah. I think lighting is so important, actually, with live broadcasts. So if you go, uh, if you can pull up my Facebook page or my YouTube page, you'll see how I've lit my room, which is basically it's the same position. So where I am now, I'm just in the corner of my room. You can see it. Now you can see what's going on in the background. Now you, there's a big Alvis sign. That's my flat screen television. And if you look at the background, it lends itself to being lit. And and that just changes colour gradually throughout each performance and each song. But it's about creating the atmosphere while still keeping the authenticity of where you are. The amount of people that stream live and they do it in a kitchen and they put their angle. I mean, you must have seen this where so and they do it and it's like the phone's like that and they're like yeah yeah so what i'm doing is and, and i'm looking at the screen like yeah so what i reckon you're seeing like their plates and like washing up uh, <laughs> freak. why would you show us that think about where you are i consider this my studio this is it everything i do is in this position and so even your thing oh it's just neil in his shed but it's not just Neil in his shed. It's not just cobbled together. You are lit. Yeah, because you're... you're oh, hang on. <laughs> I have a bit of a cable oh, issue I there. I say, your YouTube clips always look really good as you then lost picture. Well, thanks. I mean, it's just tiny, tiny notches. So down here, that's a Rootmaster bus cushion. I've got an up lighter <laughs> here. I've got my homemade YouTube play button for when I got 1,000 subscribers that my son made out of um, hammer beads. And these folders are actually, they're, they're real. I've got stuff in them. You've realized that that area, your working area, is in effect your set. That's what you welcome people into. It's what you use for work, but you're also conscious of the fact that, do you know what? There's some files in the background, the lovely picture of the, of the YouTube, thousand subscribers. None of this would really be noticeable to anyone watching, but what it does do, it invites you in. Hello, thanks for watching. Click on the link in the description to see the full episode now and the Great British YouTubers podcast is available on your nearest podcast app.